Hey guys, what is up? How have you been doing since my last video? Good, I hope. Making smart choices, safe choices, and staying focused. But I thought I'd jump on here quick to talk a little bit about some crazy stuff that's happening over in Wisconsin. So the other day I got a call from my cousin who happens to live in Wisconsin and she asked me if I heard the news that there was a possible serial killer in Milwaukee. And nope, I hadn't, which is crazy to me because people are literally finding body parts throughout Milwaukee. So shout out to my cousin Melissa because after we got off the phone, I started doing what I do best, deep diving into the world of the internet, trying to find out as much information as possible so I can share it with you guys. Since I talked to my cousin, there's been so much information that has come out. It's been hard to keep up with. So with her help, we have been doing our best. And this is some scary stuff. But before we get into it, in case you are new here, my name is Desiree and this is Criminally Focused. That's Luna. And on Criminally Focused, we talk a little bit about this, a little bit about that. But we're always focused on true crime. Whether or not you're a returning OG or you're new to my channel, welcome. I am so glad you found me and I'm happy to have you here. If you like what you see, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. It's a free way to help your girl out. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, grab whatever you're drinking or smoking and let's get right into it. Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office confirms to 12 News the discovery of a human body part in Milwaukee's Walnut Hill neighborhood. It's a block away from where police found the car of missing 19-year-old Sade Carlina Robinson. Okay, so y'all ready? Please tell me you've heard of this and I'm the only one that wasn't aware that there was a possible serial killer lurking in Milwaukee County, Wisconsin. Please? So Milwaukee is the largest city in Wisconsin with over 550,000 residents. So as you can imagine with all these people, there's probably an uptick in crime. So I think it's safe to say that, you know, the Milwaukee police stay pretty busy. However, I think with even years of experience, absolutely nothing could prepare them for what they're now investigating. Tonight, the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office confirms to 12 News the discovery of a human body part in Milwaukee's Walnut Hill neighborhood. This all began on April 1st when 19-year-old Shade Robinson was reported missing by a co-worker when she failed to turn up for work that day. The next day, on April 2nd in the morning, a woman called 911 when she noticed that there was a car on fire in the alley behind some houses. Then, around 5.30 later that day, another call came into 911 call center. This time, the caller was calling to tell police they'd found a human leg while walking through Warnamont Park. Two days later, on Thursday, April 4th, a suspect of interest connected to the severed leg was taken into custody. You know, at first they weren't naming any names. They weren't saying, you know, who this person of interest was. But we now know him as Maxwell Anderson. And at the time of making this video, more and more information is coming out about Maxwell. And we're going to get into that later in the video. But right now I just want to go through the timeline briefly. Because the gruesome discoveries continued. And on Friday, April 5th, around... 10 p.m., another human body part was located near the 31st and Galena Playground. Then, on Saturday, April 6th, around 6 p.m., human remains were found about a block away from where the car fire had occurred earlier the week. Medical examiners arrived on scene about an hour later. And then on Sunday, April 7th, the final discovery so far was found. Human remains. So just... 
recapping, that's a total of four crime scenes where four different sets of human remains, aka body parts, were found in less than a week's time. So what the hell is happening in Milwaukee? Well, let's go over this timeline a bit deeper and focus on the facts and what has been released to the public. So, as I stated earlier on April 1st, 19-year-old Shade Robinson was reported missing by a coworker when she failed to turn up for work that day. And this was just incredibly out of character as Shade was known for being pretty reliable. A welfare check was conducted and Shade was enlisted as, you know, critically missing. She was described as 5 feet tall and around 135 pounds and has black hair and brown eyes. At the time she disappeared, she was possibly wearing a black coat, a white hooded sweatshirt, blue jeans, pants, and white shoes. Since her disappearance, a lot of information has come out about what a great person Sade was, so I think it's important to just take a quick second to talk about her and the impact that she had on those around her. 19-year-old Sade Carlina Robinson was born on May 10, 2004 in Mississippi. When she was two years old, she moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin with her mom. Her dad moved to Florida, but from everything that I've read online, it seems like she spent her time growing up with both parents. In late 2019, however, she moved back to Milwaukee to live with her mom and attended Riverside High School. Her mom said in an interview that Shade actually graduated from high school a month early, which I think is awesome. It just sounds like she really had her goals set and was in a really good place in life. After high school, Shade went on to start getting her associate's degree in criminal justice at the Milwaukee Technical College and actually was about to graduate in May. Before her disappearance, she was a cashier at a restaurant called the Pizza Shuttle, which is located on the east side of Milwaukee, I believe. According to her manager, she was a favorite among her coworkers and the customers. And I just thought it was kind of cute because I was reading in some articles that her uh, coworkers referred to her as the heart of the pizza shuttle. And I just think that shows how special she was to, you know, the people around her. Shade was also very close to her family and talked to her mom and younger sister on the daily through group chats, texts, and they were even connected on Life360. She's reported to have last been seen in the area of 1800 North Commerce Street in Milwaukee. On the morning that she disappeared, April 1st, Shade and her mom had a pretty normal conversation. I guess just apparently talking about her hair, work, and her plans for the night. At some point in the morning, though, her mom said she received a text from Shade asking to borrow $15. And she just thought that was really weird because Shade has a job and, you know, normally wouldn't be asking to borrow money. But not really thinking much more of it, she sent Shade the money and Shade responded saying, thank you, I love you. Later that day, however, she failed to report to her shift at the pizza shuttle. And in all of the interviews of her family and friends, I could just really, really feel the heartache they were feeling. We need to bring... The heart of Pizza Shuttle back home. The heart of Pizza Shuttle, Shade Robinson, went missing on April 1st. Today, Julia Ferrero looks at photos of her son Benicio and Shade working together at the restaurant. They vibed, they listened to music, they laughed. I mean, they talked about everything. Julia just got back from visiting Benicio at college. She says her son is heartbroken over Shade's disappearance. He's devastated. Um, He's still marching on because Sade would want him to because she would be like, nope, I don't want you to be sad. I want you to keep living your life. Many Pizza Shuttle employees too upset to go on camera tell me her smiley presence is unforgettable. Julia would agree. Always laughing, smiling, making the customers feel like welcomed and the employees welcomed and just like always lit up the room. Family and friends are not losing hope. They want to bring their ray of light safely back home. She is somebody that is very special, you know, and I hope we can find some answers for her. So after Shade went missing, things got a bit creepy and gruesome in Milwaukee. On Tuesday, April 2nd, the day after she was reported missing, Milwaukee police received a call from a woman reporting that there was a car on fire in the alley behind her home. 
The car fire was in the area of 30th and Lisbon Street. According to the reports that I've read, the car had been set on fire within, leading to look like it had been intentionally set. The car later was identified as belonging to Shadi Robinson by her family members. From 30th and Lisbon, where witnesses say MPD and the sheriff's office were investigating a car fire. Family members of missing 19-year-old Shade Carlina Robinson tell me her car was found burnt in an alley there Tuesday. Police say Robinson was last seen Monday. Police have not said if the two situations are connected. I spoke to the woman who saw the car on fire and called 911. She says she doesn't think that fire started on its own. I looked out the window and then I see a car right there and then I noticed a fire starting in there. So I ran to my room and got my phone and called the fire department or called the 911. It looks like somebody had started it. Um, nothing else was smoking outside the car, so it started in the inside. Later on the afternoon of April 2nd, the 911 call center received another call, this time from someone reporting that they had just found a severed human leg while walking through an area in Cudahy, Wisconsin. Cudahy is a neighboring town, and it's about eight miles or so from Milwaukee. So this leg was found in an area known as Warnamont Park, which is located at 5400 South Lake Drive. It's a pretty large area. It's, it's beautiful there. It's got like an eight hole golf course and an archery. And then there's a section, I guess, of the Oak Leaf Trail. And then, I don't know, there's just a lot of space and a lot going on. And this leg was apparently found either on or in Lake Michigan. On Thursday, April 4th, it was announced by investigators that they had taken a person of interest into custody. We know him as Maxwell Anderson. Thursday and Friday, for over 24 hours, investigators searched his house and his belongings and were definitely going to get into what was found at his home. However, I just kind of want to finish deep diving into this timeline a bit, and then we'll go over that. So around 10 p.m. on Friday, April 5th, another human body part was found in Milwaukee near 30th and Lisbon. They haven't said what this body part was. However... They did say that it was found at a park. Shadi's family has reportedly been searching the areas, trying to find any information, any belongings, anything that belonged to her. And during the weekend, they did find a blanket that they called a memorial blanket. And it features pictures of her and her dog, who apparently had passed away. Investigators haven't really released how the blanket was found. However, in an interview on Nancy Gray's podcast, she interviews a forensic psychologist, and I'm forgetting his name, but he had some interesting things to say. So he said that depending on how the blanket was found really says a lot about the crime. If it was found basically laying out like in this picture, he suggested that the killer left it on purpose like that, basically to send a message, like, basically, this is who I've killed. However, if it was found balled up and discarded, that might signify how he felt about his victim. Just kind of felt like his victim was trash and threw him away. Saturday, April 6th, around 6.15 p.m., more human remains were found, and a medical examiner was on scene about an hour later. I believe this was near 31st and Galena. Then, on April 7th, another human body part was found around 31st and Walnut. And this, I guess, was pretty close to the scene of the car fire. All of the remains are basically about 15 miles apart from each other. And the ones that were found over the weekend were just blocks away. So, now that we've had a chance to look at the timeline a bit deeper... Now let's talk about the piece of shit waste of life, I guess innocent until proven guilty, person of interest that they arrested or took into custody on April 4th. His name is Maxwell Anderson and he's 33 years old. Although Anderson wasn't originally charged with a crime, prosecutors had enough evidence to hold him on what is called a probable cause hold for 72 hours. This was extended, and during this time, it allowed investigators to be able to 
test blood and DNA samples. According to investigators, when they arrived at Anderson's house, they found traces of blood in his stairwell along with a blood-stained comforter inside his house. As they continued looking through his home, they entered the basement and they found what they have labeled as a sex dungeon. On April 9th, Maxwell, along with his lawyer, appeared for his first court appearance. Now, I don't know if this is a public defender or if he actually hired an attorney, but well in front of the judge, his lawyer actually argued that although investigators have cell tower data that connected Maxwell to one of the scenes of the crimes, along with the fact that he was apparently known to have had, had contact with Sade, Maxwell shouldn't have been being held in custody without charges. Well, the lawyer can rest easily now, knowing that his client isn't being held without charges, because on Friday, April 12th, Maxwell was charged with first-degree intentional homicide, mutilation of a corpse, as well as arson for the car fire. And new today, 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson goes from a person of interest to the man charged with the death of 19-year-old Shade Robinson. It's a gruesome case that started 10 days ago with the discovery of a human leg in Warnemont Park. And we do have team coverage for you this morning. Zoe Chapala learned more about the in-depth investigation by Milwaukee law enforcement. But we'll start with Fox 6's Durante Matthews, who was in court for Anderson's appearance this morning. And Durante, you also spoke to the family of Shade Robinson. I did, and it was a very, very difficult day for her family and the family of 19-year-old Shade Robinson in court today. Many of them were in tears before walking out of court, and a lot of them were shaking, sitting behind the man who was accused of killing Shade, and that's, as you mentioned, 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson. Now, his charges were read in court today. Now, that includes first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and arson. Now, if convicted, that first-degree intentional homicide charge is enough to land him in prison for the rest of his life. But today in court, his attorney actually tried to get that homicide charge dismissed, saying that there's not enough physical evidence to prove it, but the judge dismissed it. Prosecutors say back on April 1st, on Monday, Anderson and Robinson were going out for a date. They went back to Anderson's home on South 39th Street sometime after 9 o'clock. Prosecutors say it's between that time and 12.45 in the morning that Anderson killed her. They say he then dismembered her body and scattered them at different parts around the county. Police found her leg foot and other human remains in different areas last week and police arrested Anderson on April 6th during a traffic stop. Now we did speak with Robson's family. They gave us a brief statement after court. Sade was more than a person. She was an angel. Not having her right now is very painful. We need justice for Sade. Me and my family will never be okay. My sister and parents won't stop shaking and it ain't because they're nervous. Imagine trying to bury your niece with nobody for the service. I need justice for Sade. I have nothing more to say. And prosecutors did say that there are still parts of Sade's body that are still missing. Today, a judge said Anderson's cash bond at $5 million, but his attorney tried to get that lower to $500,000. That was later dismissed. Anderson is due back in court on April 22nd. Live outside of the Milwaukee County Courthouse, Durante Matthews, Fox 6 News. Durante, I'll throw you one other question, actually, if you don't mind very quickly here. Uh, we heard from the uncle there. You could hear the pain and anger in his voice. You also spoke to Sade Robinson's mother. What did she have to say after court? So she essentially echoed the same sentiments as the uncle did, how she really wants justice for her daughter. Now, she was in a very understandably emotional state, and a lot of the words she used are not really appropriate for, for television. But in a sense, she's very angry at Anderson, and more than anything, she just wants to have her daughter back. You can certainly understand the furor there. Durante Matthews covering this in Milwaukee County for us. Thank you very much. Like I said earlier, since this is an ongoing investigation, more news is coming out on the daily. A press conference was then held on April 12th, just to kind of update the public about what was going on with the case. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Today we're going to give a brief update regarding the severed leg that was found and some of the human remains that have been found throughout Milwaukee County. As you know, on April the 2nd at approximately 5.29 p.m., Milwaukee County 911 dispatch received a call from Cudahy Police Department regarding a severed leg at Warnemont Park. It was near the golf course and the uh, pumping um, house. And so uh, the leg was amputated from the, uh, around the hip down. And uh, as a result, the um, 
the leg appeared to be that of an African American female. Subsequently, a Milwaukee police officer who was aware of our investigation raised the possibility that the leg may be related to a missing person investigation that they were conducting. And that uh, missing person was Sade Robinson. On Wednesday, April the 4th, our investigation led to a person of interest, Maxwell Stephen Anderson, who lives in the 3100 block of South 39th Street, where he was arrested after a traffic stop near the home. A search warrant was conducted. The severed leg has been preliminarily identified as belonging to Ms. Robinson. Our investigators have worked around the clock on this investigation. As a result of their diligence and with the help of our criminal justice partners, the District Attorney's Office issued charges today against Maxwell Stephen Anderson for first degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and arson of property other than building. He remains in custody. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Robinson family, friends, and the Milwaukee community who have embraced this family. Please note we continue to search for additional evidence that has not been located. Anyone with information is asked to contact Milwaukee Police Department at 414-935-7360 or to remain anonymous, contact Crime Stoppers at 414-224-TIPS or P3TIPS. My thoughts and my prayers go out to Shadi's family. I can't imagine not only what it would be like to lose your child, but then to have to search for her and find her belongings and possibly her body parts. It's just unreal. Blows my mind. And my heart just hurts for them. If you want to donate and help her family, there is a GoFundMe. So let's just kind of go over briefly what the GoFundMe says. Starting out, it says, you know, hashtag justice for Sade, our fallen angel. And it looks like they've got about a $30,000 goal. But in the beginning of the description, it just goes over basically what we've already talked about in the video. However, I just want to scroll down to read this part of their statement. The pain of losing Sade has left a void in the hearts of her family, especially her grieving mother and little sister, along with other relatives, friends, and the entire community who loved and supported her. As we come together to honor Sade's memory, we aim to provide her with the dignified farewell she deserves. And, you know, as I stated, it does look like they've reached their $30,000 goal. However, I'm sure that number will increase with time. But this is what they said about their goal. We are reaching out to you, our compassionate community, to help us raise $30,000 to cover the expenses for Sade's memorial service and other necessities during this difficult time. Your generous contributions will go towards arranging a memorial befitting a princess, reflecting the beauty and grace that Sade exuded in her life. Your support means the world to us during this challenging time. Every donation, no matter the size, will make a difference in honoring Sade's memory and supporting her grieving family. Remember that this video usually takes a couple days to edit once I finish recording, so you're probably not getting the latest information. However, do know that I will put updates um, in my community tabs on YouTube, as well as on my X or Twitter, so you guys can kind of see updates there. Okay. So don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time, guys, stay safe and stay focused. Bye.